Hello and welcome. I am Raghav and welcome to School of Basics. And today I am going to take up the topic how Selenium works. So if you are working with Selenium or if you have worked with Selenium, you might have got this question in general or in any interviews and it will always be very useful and important if you know the internal working and architecture of Selenium. So today we will discuss how Selenium works and after this session you can go confidently in any interview or in general you can explain how Selenium works. So let's get started and Selenium works in the client and server design or architecture. In the last session I explained about how Appium works and we saw that Appium works in the client and server architecture and in the same way Selenium also works in the client and server design. In Selenium there are four major components and these are So these are the four major components in Selenium architecture. So the first one is the Selenium client libraries. Now the developers of Selenium have created these libraries for different programming languages like Java, C Sharp, Python and so on. So you can get the Selenium library based on your preference of programming language and then you can implement Selenium. So here we have Java. So we have Java, Python, C Sharp, Perl, PHP, Ruby, JavaScript and so on. If you go to the Selenium official page which is seleniumhq.org and you will go to the download section, you will find all these client libraries. So you can download uh, them and you can use them in your project. For example, if I am uh, working with Selenium and I want to create a automation framework using Selenium in Java, I will get the Java Selenium client libraries and then I will add them to my project and then I can use the functions. So this is the Selenium client libraries. Then we have JSON via protocol. This is a very important component. So here, the, as I told you, this is a client and server architecture. So here this part is client. So this is client. And this part is server. So we have a client and a server and to interact between client and server we use JSON via protocol. So JSON via protocol is a component that converts our request in a format that can be understood by the server and also it then uh, converts the request that can be understood by the client. So to enable this communication between client and server we have JSON via protocol and this is the second important component and the third component is the browser drivers. So these are browser specific drivers. So for example, if you are doing automation on Chrome browser, you will need to add a Chrome driver. If you are doing on Firefox, you will need to add a Geeko driver. So here we have Chrome driver. We have Chrome driver, Geeko driver. IE driver, Safari driver and so on and these drivers interact with the real browsers that can be Chrome so we have these drivers interact with their corresponding real browsers now here you might also get this question that why do we need these browser drivers why can't we directly interact with the real browsers so the reason for that is the browsers do not want to expose their functionalities to any third party and for the real browsers selenium is a third party it is not a component of its own architecture it is a third party and therefore we need a component that can interact with the browsers and without exposing its functionality so therefore we need these browser drivers now in the future like with selenium 4 and future releases we might not need this browser drivers anymore and we would be able to interact with the real browsers directly but as of now as of the time of recording this video we need these browser drivers so these are this is the browser drivers and then we have the real browser so these are the major four components now how does the interaction takes place and how does the information flows so whenever you will write your program or you will code for uh, selenium functions in your ide like eclipse or uh, visual studio you will run the program and that will convert the request and go to json via protocol so for example you will say in your code
So in our code, we will say driver dot get to some particular URL, and this will go to JSON via protocol. And we also have some, uh, we also have Selenium APIs that will do some conversion and send it to JSON via protocol. Now JSON via protocol has REST APIs which work over HTTP. So for every command in Selenium, there is a corresponding REST API in JSON via protocol. If you go to the web page of JSON via protocol Selenium, you will find that for every possible command that you can give in Selenium, there is a API. For example, for click there, you will find an API for navigate, for wait, every possible function or command that you can think of or you can code in your ID, there is a API in JSON via protocol and this API is a REST API that has JSON format and this goes as a URL to the browser drivers and every browser driver has its own HTTP server. So here we have an HTTP server and this is how the interaction takes place. So for example, when we say get, there is an API called session, session ID forward slash URL it can send a get or a post request. So for example, if we are navigating to a URL, it will send a post request. If we are fetching the URL from the browser, it can be a get request. Now, uh, do not worry on the REST architecture. If you want to learn more on how REST web services or how REST APIs work, I have a separate playlist on that. You can watch that. But for now, let us focus on this, that the information will get converted into a REST based URL that has JSON format and can work over HTTP. And this request will go to the browser drivers and every browser driver has a HTTP server, it will interact with that and the browser drivers in turn will interact with the real browsers and the function or action will take place on the real browser. And this information is not just a single directional information, we also get the response back. So in the same way, we will get the response back from browser, it will come here and then it will come to our client and to the ID. So whatever is the response, whether it is successful response or there is some issue or error, we will get some codes along with some message and that will flow until to our ID and with the help of Selenium client libraries, it will get decoded into some meaningful messages and that message you will see in your console. For example, if you are using Eclipse, in the Eclipse console, you will see the message whether it was successful or if there was some issue, what is the message on that it will be shown on the console. So this is how uh, Selenium works. This is the basic architecture or design of Selenium. Now you can go confidently and explain about Selenium architecture in any interviews or in general. I hope this session was very useful for you. Thank you for watching.